In Washington, everyone agreed that farm prices were low because of a huge surplus of farm products. Once again, President Roosevelt was determined that the federal government should intervene. He engineered a formula unlike any the country had ever seen. The Agricultural Adjustment Act of 1933 was designed to raise the price of farm products by reducing the surplus. Farmers were paid to destroy millions of unsold pigs and to plow under 10 million acres of crops they'd already planted. The president's farm bill seemed to contradict the basic nature of farming. It actually paid farmers to produce less. It was a very sharp break with the traditions of the land. Many farmers were deeply offended at the idea of curtailing production. This was unknown to them. It seemed contradictory. It violated this basic sense of what a farmer existed for. And as far as some of the president's critics were concerned, as bad as times were, it violated the American way of life. More Bolshevistic than any regulation in Soviet Russia, said one Republican congressman. No one thought at the time that this dramatic intrusion by the government in yet another aspect of life would last until the 1990s. In the depths of the Depression, most farmers were just grateful for a chance to survive. The Vogel family in Stewart, Nebraska, was about to lose its farm. Corn was worth 10 cents a bushel uh, on the market then, and that wouldn't pay enough to stop this foreclosure. Somehow a government program came that we've learned about that brought the price up to 50 cents a bushel, and that money was enough to stop the foreclosure that fall. And we'll always remember the, how wonderful it was that someone helped us. President Roosevelt identified with farmers. He admired their independence. But once again, as it had been with the textile workers and the unions, government involvement would lead to unintended consequences. Roosevelt achieved he reached